The following is a world class bullshitters exclusive. Friends, I've been called the Nostradamus of bullshit because I can see a dumpster fire before it even happens. And last week it was announced that Phoebe Waller Bridge was going to be involved with a new Tomb Raider series on Amazon Prime. Well, guess what? This thing is a dumpster fire in the making. Fans around the world have loved Lara Croft for many, many decades at this point. She's been around since 1996. Tomb Raider used to be one of the biggest franchises on the planet. And of course, it's Hollywood's MO to dig up something old, dust it off, and present it new. What's new this time? This woman right here, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Now, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is a name most of you are not going to know. If you're a fan of this channel, we call her Poob. Why? Because it sounds funny. It also sounds like shit, which is exactly what she makes every time she's associated with an iconic franchise. She ruined Star Wars, she ruined James Bond, and most recently she ruined Indiana Jones. Now everyone out there in the world with a brain is dreading her involvement with Tomb Raider, because this woman's brand of entertainment is all about deconstruction. It's about deconstructing what makes something fun, iconic, and memorable. So Tomb Raider is a fun franchise about globe trotting, tomb raiding, fighting dinosaurs, and a whole lot more. And of course, it can't be any of those things, because in the modern world, it's offensive to raid tombs. It's imperialistic bullshit. It's the white man keeping society down. Actually, it's Tomb Raider, so of course they're going to build this shit up and play it off for last, because if a woman can do it, it's okay. And if a guy does it, let's cancel the franchise. See, folks, what's been happening as of late is we've been getting all these iconic franchises being so bad that you want something new. But... Iconic means recognizable, familiarity, and familiarity is so important to entertainment audiences today. We go into a theater not knowing what to expect, we go into watching a show not knowing what to expect, but if we recognize a brand name, well, we can go in feeling nice and comfortable because it's right there on the box, the brand name, you know exactly what you're going to get. Well, guess what? With Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I know exactly what I'm going to get. Droid rights, killing James Bond, having Indiana Jones cower in the corner. But again, none of that will happen with Lara Croft because it's a woman character. And I know you're thinking to yourself, wow, how can you say that? Well, easy. I'm just doing research. These aren't my views. These aren't my opinions. I'm basing all of this stuff on everything I have seen in the modern world. There is a chip on the shoulder of people who make entertainment today. They're trying to prove how virtuous they are, all while using entertainment as a therapy session for their garbage. So did Phoebe Waller-Bridge go through some shit? Probably. Is it my concern? Absolutely not. Do I care? I want to care about a person, but the person that ruined Indiana Jones and James Bond and Star Wars, beyond Kathleen Kennedy, well, you're not going to get any simpy from me. Now, what I expect this show to be is a dumpster fire of feminism and modern ideology on the internet. Will the show be full of these tropes and themes? Possibly. Most entertainment is. But it could also possibly not be. Now, of course, I'm willing to give everything the benefit of the doubt. But after years and years of disappointment with Phoebe Waller-Bridge and her brand of garbage and what she brings, I don't expect this show to be anything worthwhile. But what I can't wait for is the dumpster fire in the media, in the press. Much like Velma, a garbage show that appeals to no one, you have defenders out there. Oh, Mindy Kaling, she's strong. It's a strong, independent woman doing this shit. Look, ladies out there, you all have the same power. You have the ability, but why don't you make something good? I'm so tired of artists in general, male or female, who use entertainment as a therapy session. Go hire a therapist. Go talk to someone who cares. I don't care if you've been treated a certain way. It sucks, but guess what? Everybody's been treated a certain way. We all get up, dust ourselves off, and move on to the next thing. You people sit around and bitch and whine and fail upwards. So Tomb Raider is not about Phoebe Waller-Bridge's insecurity as a woman with a weird mole. It is not about what some guy said to you in the past. It's not about what you did or you didn't do or anything like that. It's a show about Laura Croft. It's a show about raiding tombs. It's a show about going out and fighting shit and doing stuff and being cool. It's also a show based on modern Tomb Raider. And see, folks, modern Tomb Raider falls into the trap that most entertainment, especially video games, falls into. They're made for journalists, not for fans. Just like movies, they're made for critics, not for fans. You see, folks, everybody in today's world is so easily distracted that all they have time for is the number score of a show. 90% on IGN means a lot of people are going to go see it or a lot of people are going to go download it and play it. 89% on Rotten Tomatoes means a lot of Blu-rays are going to be sold in the future and a lot of movie tickets will be sold opening weekend. All of our entertainment has been watered down to appeal to the people who give it a good score. Now, sadly, the people who give it a good score, these 
journalists, they are all one-sided. They believe a certain things. They all view a certain thing the same way. It's a very one-sided viewpoint. And so all of our entertainment suffers. That is why female video game characters look like men which isn't really fair to the ladies. Why should their femininity and beauty be watered down because some game journalist on the internet is insecure about their looks? Game journalists, I'm sorry you were bullied. I'm sorry you were berated. I'm sorry you were abused. But I didn't do it to you. I don't know you. I kind of care as a human being, but what I don't care about is making video games appeal to you, to be more for you. You're not a gamer. If a game has to be watered down to make sure a journalist can play it so then they can review it and give it a good score so it sells, fuck that. And I'm sorry, I usually try to drop language like that later in a video or not at all these days. That's why I'm wearing a suit, cleaning up the image, don't want to scream into the void. Then again, I never have. That's not me. That's another channel most people mistake me for on Twitter. But I am a sympathetic human being. I try to take these things with a, a, a real man's approach. How would I feel in a situation? How do I feel when certain things happen to me? I care on that level. But what you don't see is me going out and writing a Barbie movie. You don't see me going out and creating things about how much I hate this and that and using it as a justification for my shitty chip on my shoulder. Of course, a lot of people who have a chip on their shoulder have something traumatic happen. But today, trauma is a much more broad phrase because people on the internet are very hyperbolic and people in the real world become very hyperbolic based on their internet interactions. So they in turn become very hyperbolic. Instead of being bothered, I'm offended. Instead of being inconvenienced, I'm assaulted. I'm being held against my will. I am, you're full of shit is what you are. Most entertainment today sucks. Of course you can find the great independent stuff like Woke Busters or Stealing Solo from me, but all you get from mainstream entertainment is a brand, an IP, and well, garbage that follows suit. If Phoebe Waller-Bridge's involvement with Indiana Jones sucked, and James Bond sucked, and Star Wars sucked, why should I spend my time beyond my money, because I can make more money, no problem, but I can't get any more time back. And so why would I waste the one resource that I can never replicate? Why would I waste my life and my time watching a show like this? Why would I even waste my time giving it the benefit of the doubt that because Phoebe Waller-Bridge is involved, it could be good? I watched Indiana Jones be bent over a barrel and gone in dry. And yes, I lived through Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Kathleen Kennedy fucked up Indiana Jones. Now I know you're saying, Jeff, she's just an actor. Why are you blaming her? She wrote James Bond. She was hired to flesh out the James Bond scenes and the humor. She is known as a writer in entertainment because she says the right things. She has the right views. She believes the shit that the producers believe and all these idiots that make these shows. And so therefore, she gets to write your entertainment. She gets to control the narrative because she plays into their narrative. Now, if I was making a Tomb Raider show, Tomb Raider would be much more like the 90s video game. Action, excitement, dinosaurs, the Great Wall of China, all kinds of cool, memorable shit. It wouldn't be some tiny woman in a jungle who's all cut up, who gets beat the shit 10 times over and then just picks herself up and goes and gets her bow and arrow and kicks everybody's ass. I don't even like when other heroes constantly get the shit beat out of them unless it's for humor. Even Indiana Jones himself, after all the beatings he takes, they turn it into a joke. All you're doing is cashing in on a brand name. You're, you're expecting audiences to remember the good feelings and remember all of the emotions associated with that brand. But Phoebe Waller-Bridge herself is a brand. So when you have such a garbage brand like her, where it's, well, let's dump on the characters, let's put some bullshit ideology, let's take the jokes that could be good jokes, and let's make them mean-spirited and make our heroes that we like suck b-hole. That's all she's associated with. And so if I'm supposed to buy into a brand blindly, then why can't I buy into her brand blindly? Why can't I know going in that it's going to be that kind of rhetoric? Why can't I know going in that it's going to be more of the same old rigmarole? The Phoebe Waller Bridge, I think I'm smarter than you. I'm really insecure. I'm going to talk about how cool I am. I'm going to put this shit out there, but everybody can see how paper thin my skin truly is. Lady, I'll never meet you. You'll never meet me. And that's great. I don't want to. I have nothing to say to you. Just like you have nothing to say to me. But, Tomb Raider was a part of my childhood. Tomb Raider was a part of my life. And Tomb Raider, sadly, is back on my mind for all the wrong reasons. If you would have announced a Tomb Raider television show and I knew it would be fun like the old Tomb Raider, well, guess what? I'd have bought in blindly. I have a lot of good feelings and memories of that. But it's modern, and I don't like that. It's not about age, it's about 
Well, the quality dropping. And it all boils back to the whole point I made earlier. It's made for journalists. The journalists don't represent you. They go off to weird schools. They have weird friendships. They have weird views, weird beliefs that are antithetical to the mainstream. You don't need to change your views. You don't need to change your beliefs. But when you're making something based on something iconic and recognizable, it is not your right to change it for your views and beliefs. If you're picking up the mantle of something that previously exists, it is your responsibility to carry it with great respect, honor, and dignity. Don't make it a joke. Don't turn it into a fucking therapy session for your bullshit. You carry it with pride. You move on and you make something epic and iconic and stand the test of time. Tomb Raider has a better shot at that because, again, it features a woman. And, of course, Phoebe Waller-Bridge isn't going to do anything to stand against her views and beliefs and her ideals. And that is why this show will be lauded and praised in the press. It doesn't take a college degree. It doesn't take being from the year 3035. It doesn't take any of these things to smell this bullshit a mile away. It takes one of these. And unless your name's Voldemort, you got one. So use it. Anytime you see a branded IP getting an adaptation, expect it to be full of garbage. All you have to do is five minutes of research. Look up the showrunner, look up the producer, look up the people that get the press release. Find out who they are. Why do you think people are dreading the acolyte? Because Leslie Headland has a career and a history and people don't like what she's associated with. It's not anger, it's not hatred, it's not bigotry, it's not sexism. It's common sense. If somebody shits the bed enough times, it's time to change the sheets. Once is enough, somehow these people get 10, 15, 20 tries to clean up their act and they never do. That is why millions of us out here feel the way we do, talk the way we do, act the way we do. Because the powers that be have shit downhill for years. You think we're going to make entertainment, people are going to buy it, and they're going to think the way we think too. No. Good entertainment makes people think. Great entertainment can change minds. But the message has to be sound. The message has been poisoned. There is no quality in what's being sold to you today. That's why big monster movies or science fiction really win today's box office. Science fiction films like Dune and Planet of the Apes all have a deeper message. They all have something that resonates with more of an audience. It's a smarter message. It's something that resonates with humanity. Post 2020, we're tired of this shit. Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I don't expect anything to come from you that is worth my time. Folks, let me know what you think about all of this. I intended to make this as a one minute YouTube short and I went on a rant. I went on a tangent, but here's the thing. I'm passionate about entertainment. I care about what is made. It's not about wanting TV shows to look like me or act a certain way. See, I'm above that. Most people out there make shit and go, oh, it has to represent me. It has to be me. Look, everything's going to represent the writer. Everything's going to have a little bit of them in it. But when you take out the accessibility, that's where your art dies. It's really not art anymore. It's more of a personal homework project. And well, yeah, you might get a good grade, but I don't care what you get on a term paper. I care about what I get on a term paper. But if you take me on a ride where I feel like I'm invested in the journey and the characters, then I will want you to win all day, every day. The big shared experience that I'm hungry for in every form of entertainment is being minimized. Not because there's no demand for it, not because there's no money in it. It's because of people like Phoebe Waller-Bridge who are tapped to write because of their ideals. I thought Fleabag was garbage. I watched it before James Bond came out so I could know what I'm getting into. Uh, Solo, a Star Wars story, an Indiana Jones, Lucasfilm, what the hell are you doing? If you get Phoebe Waller-Bridge in entertainment, you just get Kathleen Kennedy Jr. She's slightly younger, equally attractive, and just as useless. So folks, anytime you see that name, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, or Poob as we call it, that is why we always dread it. Like I said, I can smell bullshit coming a mile away. And in this case, it's over a year away. So folks, join us next year when we make fun of all the press, all the media, all the news, blindly praising this show. If it's good, we'll be the first one to tell you it's good. But if it sucks, there are no excuses. It's Tomb Raider. Don't cash in on bullshit. Make it good. Make it worthy of all of Tomb Raider. And I mean all of Tomb Raider. So folks, thank you for watching. I'll be back next time with more. If you're as passionate about entertainment as I am, make sure you back Wokebusters on Kickstarter. The link is in the description below. You can sign up right now. It'll be going live any day. I know you're thinking to yourself, Jeff, you've been saying that for a minute. Well, the book's been done. I'm waiting on a trailer because I want to wow you guys. I want you to see the book the way I do. You know, I may draw it. It's a static image. But in my mind, all of the work is a free-flowing, moving story. I can see the characters. I can feel the characters. And I wanted to create a trailer that helps you see those characters move. Because you're not able to read it yet. But I want you to feel exactly what you'll feel when you pick up the book. And what's going to be delivered to you in just a few short weeks. There's a silly phrase that we all used to laugh at. Be the change in the world that you want to see. Well, I live by, be the change in entertainment that you want to see. 
I don't like garbage stories. I don't like bullshit. I don't like stuff that makes me feel like I wasted my time or my money. When you buy one of our books, well, I can guarantee you that it won't waste your time, it won't waste your money, and you'll have a good time with it. Because that's what I want to bring you. Fun in comics. Fun in entertainment. And to create the shared experience that I am so hungry for. I want everyone to get together and laugh at the jokes, look at the art, have a good time. I don't need to worry about rhetoric and politics and left and right and male or female or any of that crap. I make fun of it all. If you exist, you're probably made fun of in Wokebusters. So folks... Get in on the joke, get in on the laugh, and let's laugh at society together. Even though the Wokebusters are here to save society from itself, I'm here to save you from boredom and garbage entertainment. And so friends, the only way you can make that happen is follow us on social media, check us out here on YouTube, read the comic books, and well, be a part of the community. I've been your host Jeff, thank you for watching, I'll be back next time with more, but like I always close out the videos, do these four things. Be smart, be safe, be cool. But always be excellent to each other. Even Phoebe Waller-Bridge if you meet her. Be kind, be respectful, be on the other side of the street walking away. That's what I'd do.